The show features adults using adult language and discussing mature topics. You have been warned. Somebody call Nintendo. What the fuck? What are you talking how, about? How, how can you see? For context for the people that we literally transitioned to this, this part of the conversation. Hi. What's going Hi. on? everyone there is a verge article that was on purpose uh titled too long didn't read the pokemon go grandpa's bike evolves to hold 64 smartphones he has a fucking peacock tail on the front of his bike that just holds cell phones <laughs> <laughs> what it looks like okay God. hi and everybody you asked how can he Hello. see through the gaps <laughs> he knows where he's going he's old he's probably been biking those roads for Many decades. Did S3 is know to get the fuck out of the way. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Kat, I, I do want to say something real quick before we start. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, for those of you that are watching live, um, as of today, October 1st, um, the Players Mix or Test Wave 3 of Retroverse just came out for those of you that backed the Kickstarter. So you might want to be checking your emails for those. Um, it will be from a drive through RPG. Um, address and we will not be using that in this campaign <laughs> just because yeah, you know we're... haven't really had time to proofread or anything then we're ending near uh, getting your end game now so yeah yeah so they nerfed um... frag strike <laughs> uh so Sirenscape, super cool if you're hearing it. It's $22 every other month for all of their board game um, sci-fi and fantasy sound sets. We're listening to Nebula right now just because it's my favorite and it's very easy to find. Um, so yeah, check that out. Uh, does anybody want to recap what the hell happened last time? Nope. So, someone was bragging about their memory. All right. Yeah, sure. So in our last <laughs> session of the game, we... Well, to, I, I believe, I remember properly, we hung out a bunch, got prepped, decided, met with, didn't we, that was the episode with Danbo? No. No, that was the one beforehand? All right. Yeah. I, we did, however, make the decision that we were going to meet up with, go for um, Lycosta. We then, um, I'm trying to now remember absolutely everything. I know we then, um, we got the new, well, wow, holy shit. I had it, and then pressure. This turned out exactly <laughs> like I thought it would. Hey, I know what I, I knew what we did, and then pressure happened. I know then from there, Luke went, sorry, Cybris, and the rest went to go watch Onyx's big debut and got a surprise of a, uh, what's it called? Cyber, Cyblight. There we go. Cyblight detection, I should say. Mm. Before the show started. So have fun, Hera. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> it's an emergency. The show might be canceled. That I means just means you'll have to do it tomorrow. That's postponed. It could be either way. It won't yeah, be canceled. So Susan is ready to torment Onyx for as long as it takes. Uh, Demona had also met with Kai, the uh, mysterious benefactor that's helping fund the demon dogs. Uh, who told her that there are mercenaries on the uh, outskirts of Del Diablo that are using stealth technology to hide from uh, any prying eyes. Um, Cybers did a bunch of research on the uh, Twilight Citadel, the uh, home base of the tyrant in the grid, and learned a little bit about what can be found there, what kind of dangers it has, that sort of thing. Um, also did a little bit of research on the Abyss on behest of Demona. Um, let's see. A Gruck changed his familiar into a hawk, and after watching him flail around hilariously for a few minutes, I believe set him out to scout in Red Ami, right? Um, I don't remember what was Passion doing through most of that. I Honestly, guys... not a lot. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I literally just think Passion did nothing really that last session. 
He would have been knowing more about Lycosta. That is, oh, was yeah. just vibing. He was just vibing. Yeah, you guys did talk a little bit about Lycosta and decided that it would be better um, to go after her first because there are people actively looking for her currently. Um, and also, uh, and to hold off going after Stonecutter, the legendary knife that can kill anything. Because as far as you guys know, it hasn't moved in a couple of millennia. It's probably safe where it is. And it, you want, uh, you, Passion was thinking that it might be best to save that for last. So they have less chances to know what you guys are planning. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can pick up on uh, day three of all of this nonsense um, when Onyx's show is supposed to air. Uh, Cyberus attended with her, uh, though I believe you actually went separately and she was not in sight at the moment. Uh, but that could just be because she's very short compared to you. She had to go for makeup and costumes or whatever. Um, and the... Why Why do I imagine that Susan sent like, uh, I don't know, what are they called? The night errands or whatever to pick her up? The, the, the police. <laughs> I genuinely was confused for a second if you meant like an intern. No. <laughs> No, she sent probably like a fucking triple SWAT team to just pick her up, and make sure. No, she arrives. she she <laughs> told you what as as <laughs> there is not a squad waiting to escort you there. So okay, that Onyx morning. Is late. Okay, how late? Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, dice are a thing. Dice are a thing, indeed. Oh god, no. It's too wobbly. I still just have B5 dice out. Yeah, fuck it. I just need a D20. Doesn't matter which 45 one. 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, so, Cyberus, you get there and the intern, uh, the Wunari media intern that had been sort of put in charge of this whole thing is absolutely... Uh, frazzled and clearly panicking a bit. Uh, her name is Haley, for the record. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, kind of running around trying to make sure everything is where it needs to be. Uh, and as you were walking around, you got a ping off of that device showing that there is somewhere in the building a side light. Or a side dev, rather. But What's that? What's the difference? Uh, so, because you did do some research, and um, uh, so a side blight is any anything infected with the side blight virus. So, it can be anything, be it a, a human, uh, an animal, a the intern, aberration. In this case. Um, in this case, the intellect devour is a side blight, but it is also what they call a side dev. So a side blight intellect devour, if that makes any sense. Oh, a side dev is just an intellect devour that's just side yes. blight. Okay. Uh, so it's it's a bit more powerful than a tr than a regular uh, intellect devour, um, but uh, from your experience, a lot squishier, uh, probably than a full on. Um, uh, Cyblite humanoid. Yep. Blast it from a distance. No worries. A side of is just a Cyblite that's underpaid to turn coffee into code. So, do I know for sure that it's the intern right away, or do I have to? Uh, so uh, you don't triangulate. Yeah. So you don't know necessarily that it's the intern. She's just the the only individual in this crowd that you recognize because everyone else here is strangers and onyx hasn't shown up uh so to try and figure out who exactly it is go ahead and give me a this would be investigation i would say well okay so how are you trying to figure it out like what clues are you looking for uh i would probably try to tr triangulate it go like around the room pointing it towards where the beeping all the time until i can see if there's a consistent point and if I think it's a person, I would point it at them. Okay. Um, I'll say then your choice, a perception or uh, investigation. 
it's much better. 15. Uh, so after several seconds of pointing it around, uh, you do find yourself like looking very closely at, sorry, I have this one fucking fruit fly that will not leave this room. I have this one um, fucking fruit fly. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> yes. Oh, no, it's the one fruit fly is. It's the side of, oh no. Uh, We're doomed. I just like imagine like giant rock. insects that are infected with cyberlite virus. That's terrifying. I, I'm imagining like a teeny tiny um, mosquito cyberlite intellect of ours. Just like, <laughs> you know. Oh, it's cute. Um, so you see it pointing towards Haley and you have that moment of like, oh shit. Uh, and then she steps aside and you see one of the um, uh, like, boom technicians the ones holding the mic uh are just sort of standing there moving things around it seems like they're the ones that it's indicating i would get grog it's vex it's a boomer <laughs> i would uh, find grog and inform him that we may have uh success success and failure at the same time in and it, in what the place let me see I'll, yeah, I'll give him the thing. We never talked about what we would do after we found one. No, you did not. <laughs> At all. I didn't think we'd get this far. <laughs> I'm surprised it works. I apologize. I've been skimming over the new test wave. What is this? That's all right. Uh, so context. You guys are... Uh, you went to... Uh, with or supposedly we're going to meet with Onyx at uh, Susan's media empire, basically, uh, for when Onyx goes on her cartoon debut. Uh, Cyberist had obtained a device that allows you guys to track Cydevs, the intellect devourers infected with Cyblite virus. Um, and in using it, he has found a singular person that the device is pinging off of. It's a gentleman, one of the guys holding like the boom mic that's adjusting the sounds and things. Uh, but in, in finding this, he has realized he doesn't really know what to do, considering there is a crowd of probably over like 150 people in this gigantic sound stage, and still no Onyx to be found. Perhaps we get Susan. Not just yet, but we'll definitely keep an eye on them. So we just watch for now, see what they do? Yes. I'll keep an eye on them. Okay, I hope they don't start spraying sidelight everywhere. However that works, I don't know. <laughs> Bizarrely, it's actually easier to contract than that. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what happens. I don't remember. I feel like you at one point did some research on sidelights in the library. Is that right? It, yes. That's, yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So then, the cyberist would know that the way that the cyberlight virus is transmitted is when you have physical contact with a creature that is infected. So hopefully, you would actually be safe because the wunari that's moving around and walking and talking is not actually the creature; it's the brain inside the head that's the creature that's infected. So hopefully, the wunari touching them not a problem if you end up having to take the brain out of there and kick its ass that might be an issue but is it is the winari Haley, and that's the one with the oh no, fuck no not. sorry the um uh the boom the uh, boomer boom guy. yeah the boomer mic I operator can... yeah mic operator if if anything goes south south i'll be taking them away to a very far place uh i could also banish if we need to evacuate banish is only time. temporary well, yeah, but to get people out of here, it would be good enough. <laughs> banish people. Well, just make them banish and them. say everybody evacuate. No, no, no. I feel like he's talking about banish the side dev and make yes. everyone evacuate. And then yeah, I'm not banish side, everybody. When the side like power, comes back, they would be nobody be around. The idea Absolutely. of just, no, we're going to banish everybody but the side dev. Just vanish 150 people working on a live <laughs> TV show. I mean, there is Special delayed effects. glass fireball. <laughs> when you want to disappear a large room. People. She's not here tonight. <laughs> they certainly go to another dimension. <laughs> that's true. One that some of us have been to. Yeah. 
Twice. I guess we just watch this person and see if they start doing anything suspicious. Okay. Uh, are you trying to be subtle about it or not really? Uh, I would be subtle. I mean, I can't really be very subtle, but... Okay. Uh, go ahead then and just roll me a, a deception check, please. Don't know how, if we're even allowed to be here, but that's not my problem. Uh, well, no one stopped you yet. Eight. Everyone just saw Cybers and was like, I'm not getting paid enough. <laughs> Cybers is just doing the, the, uh, the, they, they, uh, they live. They... It must I look so fucking that. surreal because Cybers comes in like just fucking massive, packed on, very corrupted, wearing like an impeccable suit. <laughs> That's glitched That's still out, isn't it? Glitching out. Yeah. He's, he's he's a local celebrity. Um they're allowed to go anywhere pretty much. I I think like Cybers just walks in with like such confidence of like th that just like oh yeah, no he does belong here. Yeah. Nobody knows why, but like You can get pretty like, much anywhere if you're wearing a suit. I'm going to wild sheep into a fly. Okay. And I will follow them around. At, at uh, back, probably about 10 feet away. Um, so, uh, you guys proceed to do that for the next 20 minutes or so as uh, things get progressively more and more tense of everyone waiting for Onyx to show up. Uh, and then 45 minutes later, how does Onyx enter the building? So, the uh, place the where wall. you guys are at... Some uh, she's saying body! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Sorry, that's the only way I can see oh, Onyx entering any room. Valid. That or head Onyx first. Onyx, fuck doors. <laughs> Onyx walks through the wall right beside the door. Yeah, I was about to say, it's the, it's the comical remember, thing where it goes to the door. that conversation we had and then it goes ago over. where we were like discussing putting your head through drywall and you're like, what the fuck are American houses made out of? Cardboard and tissue paper? And it's like, yes. Tara, I would, if if I had the money and you were here, I would absolutely buy a piece of plaster just to show you, or a piece of uh, drywall, to show you how easy it is to put your face through a fucking piece of drywall. Plaster I got it. You cannot plaster put your... hurts. Plaster, plaster hurt. Plaster puts like you back. A rock. Yeah, you cannot put your head through a German <laughs> I, wall. It's... I, I know, I hit my head off of your wall many times while sitting It's not there. recommended. It hurts. You'll just shatter your skull. Nice thing though about it, it is very cold in the uh, when it's uh, winter time. That is true. They're or when cold. it's cooler. I yeah. do like that. Uh, so, uh, so you guys are in like um, effectively a very large like refurbished warehouse that's become a sound stage. That's all pretty much one level. It's fucking net. <laughs> Sorry, that was damn it, Gruck. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's all effectively one level, and there are people everywhere. Uh, and as soon as people see you, they just start clearing out, uh, and you do see a couple people run ahead to let people know uh, that you're on your way in. You finally showed the fuck up. Uh, and and what? How does she enter? Uh, she just casually walks in. Is there a theme song playing when you come in? No. She doesn't have any hurry in the world, nothing. She just casually walks in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'll say that uh, you guys do see uh, Susan, who had been up at... Um, uh, there's like a... Um... Oh, also for her clothes, what she's wearing, she is um, wearing like a... just like a tank top. Like a pretty plain one. It's gray. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably like has a hole somewhere, and um, I hope it has, has holes. Like... Otherwise, how is she wearing it? <laughs> she has Such like uh, so, some like ripped uh, like uh, blue jeans on, and she's like not wearing shoes, which is pretty common for her. Yeah, she is wearing her, uh, of course. She's uh, wearing her necklace and obviously her muscle henshin um, bracelet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Susan is off in one of the corners um, on those like sort of director chairs. 
Uh, and I'll say uh, Cyberus and Gruck, as soon as she enters and people start swarming around, realizing like, oh, shit's going on. It's time to go. Uh, you see the individual that you are trying to keep an eye on start to vanish into the crowd. Oh, I'm, so, I'm hovering over top of him. Um, I will say, Gruck, you can go ahead and make a perception check at advantage. Um, Cyberus, uh, go ahead and just make a regular perception check. I got special eyes. Uh, 14. Dirty 20. Cyberus, you've lost him. You have no idea where he went. He ducked down and vanished. Uh, Gruck, you're very closely following, zipping behind as this individual is, like, literally crouched down, walking in a very, like, strange duck-like way, like the knees are bent. Wow. It's very wow. unnatural. Uh, and is making their way to one of the back rooms, like the changing rooms. Uh, and you very quickly follow them through before the door closes. Uh, sorry, Bruce, you've just seen Onyx walk in, and your target and the fly vanish. I'm going to cast Locate Creature. Okay. So I don't lose him for the next hour. Okay, yeah. So you can very easily follow behind. Um, a few moments, uh, a few seconds later, though. Um, uh, Gruck, you follow this guy as he's sort of weaving in and out through these uh, piles of, like, costumes and different things. You see the a row, like a shelf, with rows of various different versions of bubble hats. Um and uh, this individual makes her way into one of the dressing rooms and closes the door. Uh, and then <laughs> leans over. Just fly yeah, through one of the gaps. Yeah. Uh, you followed him in before he even closed it. He's not even paying any attention. Um, uh, and he actually like pushes some costumes out of the way to reveal this locked chest that looks like kind of the sort of thing you'd carry a lot of tech in. Um... <laughs> Interesting. No, that's actually true. What are you laughing about? I see things no. in slow motion. They do. They they see things in slow motion. They live why is it every lane. why is it every time I go into wild shape spy mode, we learn something new about that creature's type of vision, like how it's, fleas can't no, actually it's... see? <laughs> we the fucking nad landed on my face. <laughs> I didn't see you slap your face, so I I can't believe you. <laughs> would be so fucking funny. Gar Garfield <laughs> Oliver just sat me in the middle of the <laughs> Garfield Oliver, you need to go see Cat because they they'll they'll get rid of your fly problem. I hope they would actually be good at it because oh, like no, the good at of it. a dog will just chase it around the house endlessly and stare at it angrily, vibrating while it's up in like the top corner. I'm like, you are literally barely a foot tall. You are never getting that fly, and he's just like. <sighs> So we have two cats that are really shit at catching moth and fly and everything. I don't know why, but I thought you were going to end up shit. Uh, Rixie can be at times. She is a shit. Yeah, they're 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 tiny little shits, especially oh. Trixie, but adorable. So. Gotta miss Office Cat. She was she had this weird thing where like one week she would be amazing at catching flies, and you could literally like all around her cat tree was just fucking carnage of like ten of them dead. And then there were other days where it's like it's literally it literally landed on your paw and somehow managed to escape. It landed on you. Like I get that you have three legs and you're a little slower than other cats, but it's on your paw. And not even like your back paw, the paw that's right in front of your mouth. Just 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 snap forward and bite the fuck out of it. Nope. Anyway. <laughs> this individual in the dressing room. Uh, you pulls out a key and flips open this uh, chest uh, to reveal uh, what, for Gruck, it, it takes a second to realize um, those are bodies all sort of crammed in there. Uh, and the uh, creature that you're watching just crumples to the ground as appearing on top of this uh, chest in the pile of bodies is this uh, brain with pointy alien looking bone shard legs that's just interspersed with different wires and metal plating and different things. At that point, I turn back to normal and it needs an intelligence saving throw. 
Cool. At this point, <laughs> I'm going to say let's okay. all, uh, the three of you roll, um, initiative? Yes, words. C could I possibly Ooh, I try to stealth past its passive and get a surprise round? Oof. I don't think they would be expecting a fucking uh, fly to morph into a person. I don't know what a fly's person. deck stat would be, but that's what I would be using. I'll say that you can get one. You can get one round of. So go ahead and roll initiative anyway, just so you know it. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but you'll get one round surprise. Okay. Luckily, I am very um on it for initiatives. So twenty three. Nice. Okay. I rolled a five. So it's almost like it's moving in slow motion. Oh, for you. great! Fantastic. Everyone else rolled like me. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, this thing actually has decks. What am I doing? I'm just like looking at my dice, but it's like no, this thing's actually not the worst. Okay, I'll ask for a fly. Would you That's say it have a plus? That's not how math works, Katrina. Would you say it have a plus two modifier in dexterity? Probably not. I don't know. I've seen flies bump into things all the time. I don't know. Maybe a plus one. But maybe they mean to. Okay. Well, it makes it like a twenty-two instead of a twenty-three. Though. Yeah, you're you're still like way first. The giant fly has plus one at dex. I would think it would be less because it's giant. If that makes sense. Yeah. When you trade for size, you make up for in speed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Grookfly, you reveal yourself. Uh, so, you, as soon as the thing appears on this pile of bodies, you untransform mm -hmm. and do what? And I cast a spell with it requiring an intelligence saving throw. Uh, would it? Or, are you saying it does? Sorry. It, it does require one, yes. Okay. I don't know why I'm having such trouble hearing right now. Uh, You're targeting a brain with an insect. That's a bold strategy. Well, I'm no longer an insect. That's why. Um, um, I just randomly have a handful of clay in my hand, I guess. It's the material component. I got an at 20. In fact, I got a heck yeah that is a net 20. <laughs> okay. Of course. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll give you that. So, 21 total. Okay. That was probably the most important 20 you did because that was an 8th level spell. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Did you just cast <laughs> Labyrinth? No, that's ninth. Uh, I no. cast the Bane of Any Intelligent Creature spell. Oh, oh shit! And oh, feeble mind. What's it called? And feeble mind. Yes. Uh, so, Gruck, you do that. Um, I do and have a plan sort of B, though. Looks to you and starts to scuttle around on top of the bodies. Uh, but you got the drop on it, and you have initiative. What do you want to do? That was my action. Yeah, but, but, but I gave no, you a free one, and you're at the top of the initiative. I move over towards the door, so it can't leave that way. Unless okay. it tries to hop into my own brain. Good luck with that. Good luck. I don't have one. Um, uh, Cyrus, you go like this to cover your head. Uh, you you open the door uh, and you can sense that this this creature is very very close, like on the other side of the door, but towards like the floor area. Weirdly, if the body coll collapses or dies, I guess I don't know if it would still be detecting it. I guess it would. Anyways, I, I would notice that it, it something has changed, so I would go inside. Huh. It says if the creature's in a different form, like polymorph, then it doesn't locate that. That is a weird thing, because like technically the body that you were seeing is dead, kind of. Either way, you know that it's in the room, but it's moved in a way that's not normal. Okay. Uh, and and when you move, when you open the door, you can feel the person's body, but you can easily shove the door open. Uh, and looking in, you see Grok as Grok, a chest that's open that has what looks like an ar a human arm hanging out of it, and this brain creature standing on top, uh, having a bit of a stare off with Grok. What do you want to well, do? They got a lot of props at this place, but I think it's the best Cyber thing for me to do right Cyberus? now. 
close That's the, the door. Bad guy. Okay, I'll close the door. I'll come inside and, and we're gonna go Halo Reach style, and you're George, and I'm Noble Six. I don't think that Luke knows what that is. <laughs> That's well, a planet. I don't right? remember what this is. There's a like, there's a part oh, near the beginning when like a bunch of okay side tangents like a bunch of elites piece? show up. They take us. They take a scientist hostage, and you're a group of Spartans. And there's like one big Spartan who's got like a mini gun that he carries around everywhere, and just the the elites take a, a guy hostage and they go to run away. And there's like three. There's like four of these. Like they're like supposed to be like these super powerful elites, um, like high ranking, and. You have a team of six people, and you and the big dude go into the warehouse alone, and the big dude just closes the door. So they're <laughs> stuck in there with you. Scenes. It's one of the best scenes in the it's game. It's so good, but that, that's pretty much what just happens. Cyrus just closes the door. Which one is that? Because, like, Kevin's been George. asking me to replay. Uh, okay. It's Halo Reach. Because Kevin's been trying huh. to. Uh, we, we, we were playing um, Grand Pothlips the other day. And Kev was discussing doing another, starting another campaign of all of them again. So anyway, George's best part. So, so are we killing this Krug? Not yet. We, if we have to, we should. Uh, okay. I will. Are there any vents in the room? Like any way I could see that it could easily escape? A no, sus. <laughs> <laughs> um. I would look for another way for it to escape and. Uh, there is a vent up. up in the one corner. It is, like, screwed shut, so it would probably take some time to get in there. Unless it could, like, brute force it, but it doesn't look very strong. Um, uh, and now that you're, like, fully in the room, you can see that that chest is filled with at least three different kinds of, three different corpses of uh, individuals that look, uh, they look alive, oh. but, like, unconscious. But they're very clearly bent in ways that uh, normal humans cannot do without being in a lot of pain. Okay, so there's spares. Or possibly props for this stage company. Uh, at... Fuck you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need He's got another for that. remote. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they could do that. I thought it was one for one. Rave started. Well, what do we do? <laughs> what's the, what's the plan, Grog? I I want to restrain it, but I also don't want to touch it. Oh God, I'm blind. <coughs> Should I banish it? No. If you want. Oh. Sorry, I just banged yep. me on the desk. It'll, it'll okay. give it'll give me time to position better. Uh, so while you guys are discussing this, the side dev is going to attempt to jump into one of these individuals. Um, hmm. So many to choose from. Mm-hmm. All right, so it's actually going to attempt. Um, why not? It's got you. It's literally backed into a corner. Uh, it's going to use its action to devour intellect. I need a intellect a saving uh, intelligence saving throw from Cyberus. Let me check if I have anything against that. Boy, am I glad that Onyx is not in that room because I would 100% fail that. I have like no intelligence. This is just regular intelligence. intelligence. <laughs> why, why do you think I didn't go live when we were in the bank room? Because I knew Onyx was going to show up. <laughs> uh, 15. You lucky fucking bastard. <laughs> hey, you just got a dirty 20 on an 8th level spell. I don't want to hear it. Okay. No, not 20 on an 8th level That's literally the only one I'm going to roll for today and tomorrow, I guarantee it. Very, very good one to roll for. Gotta yeah. be honest. <laughs> Is my brain too strong for it? Yeah, so you uh, see this this uh, into uh, the brain thing sort of like uh, looks at you, and you see the wires and bits of brain start to light up, and it it almost gives you the this like light behind the eyes of 
behind your eyes with like a migraine that you've only really gotten like the first time when you were training and you gave yourself a concussion. Um, but you managed to shake it off and it does not seem to have any effect. Apparently, if you pass the save, you don't take anything. Nice. My mind uh, is still trapped. Sounds like feeble mind. Hmm. Anyway. Um. Who's next? And it it is going to sort of just cower a little bit behind one of the bodies. Uh, Onyx, walking yes. into this room, you I'll say you probably saw Cybers because Cybers is really tall, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you Cybris saw Cybers. Not exactly saddled with his yeah. uh, glitch. His hair you saw is glowing. Cybris, as soon as you walked in, started like power walking towards one of the other doors. Um, or some cast a spell and then start power walking to another door. So would you follow or would you not pay any mind? I mean, are there any assistants or something like that that are already trying to um, hurry me away somewhere? Um, at this point, none of them have a, a, a come up to you. You do see Haley, the uh, Wunari that you've met before, who's noticed you and is heading your way, but has not actually intercepted you yet. Okay, well, Onyx just trucks and does follow Cyrus in that case. Okay. Uh, you follow him easily enough to a door that is closed. I try and open the door. Take Did it. you lock it? Oh, we didn't say we locked it. <laughs> we just closed it. I mean, not that... Somebody! Not that <laughs> Not that a normal locked door could stop on it. Yeah. If the door just was locked, you just like clunk. Just of us that way. Well, like, it's a good thing taken. Onyx isn't here. You're like taken, then just like smash cut to the door smashing open and hitting Cybris on the nose. <laughs> That's actually what prevents Cybris's brain from being eaten. <laughs> Just the sharp pain snaps, <laughs> snaps it out of uh, snaps it out of it. He's like, "Oh God, my brain!" <laughs> uh, and you look into the room, see a chest full of corpses, uh, perched on, uh, on top of which is perched a brain with legs and a bunch of mechanical devices and wires and uh, me- uh, like metal plates on it. Oh God, I kick it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, someone who can do something in the group. <laughs> I'm just imagining all those horror movies where, like, somebody wakes up and they see, like, the creepy child in the hallway, and then they're just, like, pans over to Onyx, and Onyx is the one to just punch this demon what? What ball down goes the at? hallway. <laughs> all right, that's, a, I think, a 19 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Yes, a 19. <laughs> And that is um, nine magical damage. Okay. I'm not. She's not raging currently. She's just kicking the brain. <laughs> is that what and... you call it these days? That's a. <laughs> Where we do we literally make the same joke? <laughs> I was trying to think of a good one. I couldn't come up with anything. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying Onyx. Yeah, and I uh, kick it. I basically keep kicking it. <laughs> That's a dirty 20. Ooh, 10 damage. And... Sure, let's let's go on uh, where, like my bonus action. But we're not flooring. It's just brain. It should be squishy, right? Ooh, net 20. <laughs> a little squishy. Uh, well, our work here is 23. done. No, I wanted to keep it in life so, life so I can investigate it. Oh, it just comes in yeah, and right stomps right. it to death. <laughs> it's a brain um, monster. 5, 6, 10, 16. Okay. Keep it alive. It just gets fucking trampled. There's... I'm still not sure how you could interrogate this what? thing. It has no mouth. What? I can speak and I just had like a flashback to that old the animated Mulan movie of when like Mushu shows up and the horse just comes in and tramples the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's we tried to attack get the other ones and they right didn't now. tell us anything. I don't know why this one would. Um uh, it is still up. 
it's very bloodied and bleeding from all over the place, and there are bits of wires poking out. One of the metal plates has come loose. Um, uh, that's Onyx's turn. Grok, yeah. what would you like to do? Good question. Close the door. <laughs> As a bonus action, I spend a fourth level spell, and in the corner of the room, as far away as possible from that chest, a mm -hmm. vine appears out of the ground, and the okay. brain needs a dexterity saving throw. Okay. It's Mythos. But... Okay, 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 not that bad. Pretty, actually, it's pretty good. Deck saves. Um, dirty 20. Cool. So it also makes that. So Sorry. this thing's anti grok. I get it. <laughs> um, it's, got, it's a brain with legs, and you try dex and int. But that's okay, because another... That vine stays there, by the way. It doesn't go away. Okay. Um, another vine comes out from... Grok's hand, and he attempts to whip it. Okay. Fine. 17 to hit. Better, that hits. Better hit. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> yeah, it's a brain. It doesn't have a lot of armor. Uh, okay, that will be a whopping... It's a brain, it doesn't. It's, this is going to kill it, I'm pretty sure. I need to double check, because I never... Grok never uses offensive cantrips. Should but be 3d6. Doesn't Thorn Whip pull things okay. towards it? Yes. Pulls it towards you, and it's 3d6. Okay, how far away was it? Um, Maybe like 5 or 10 feet. Not super far. Well, shit. Okay, it takes 10 I mean, if you seat. wanted it to be further away, you, it, you could move, but... Nah. Okay. This will be both in and out of character, and I just never use this. Um, 10 piercing damage. Okay. And it gets pulled right up on me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, as it's yanked towards you, Cybris, uh, it's your turn. What would you like to do? It looks like Gruck has, uh, pulled it a little closer. Uh, well... Gruck, Gruck probably said, like, ah, fine. And then, like, both those vines appear. And, they, and you're pretty sure what he was trying to do was this thing was going to get ripped in half as one vine grabbed it and the other vine grabbed it and they pulled in opposite directions. I'm going to try to wrap it up in a big cloak. Okay. And contain it in like a big, big cloak. Like All a right. Bag, like a bag. All right. So I'll say that would be a improvised weapon. Like an, it's like a yeah. net, but improvised. I just realized the Fraggers are proficient in improvised weapons. That's right. Do it. So, yeah. Whatever your base attack would be with a. Cloak, so be strength. strength plus proficiency bonus. Yeah. So you, plus nine. Is it a finesse? Yeah. Is it a finesse cape? It's not a finesse cape. Okay. No, it's a heavy duty cape. I got twenty seven. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's a finesse. Yes, cape. you have captured a brain. God, you look so. You sound so fucking pissed. It's really funny. I'm just. I'm just imagining it, and I'm just like remembering. Just picturing like a very pissed off cat in a pillowcase. Yeah, that's what Cybers is trying to do. Cat, cat. <laughs> I mean, it is still a very pissed off cat in a pillowcase right now. <laughs> and now that I think yeah. about it, that's actually super viable because like everything I've seen with like animal conservation, like like Discovery Channel. No, and yeah, stuff, you just put that shit in a pillowcase, like an anaconda or something. They put it in like yep. a big sack or something, you know? Yep. Alligator. There's a video about the alligator in the trash can. Yeah. yeah. I watched a video the other day of like, um, uh, it, it, the guy's name is Coyote Peterson. He does a lot of stuff with like snakes. And the one snake, they went to go milk it. And they're like, do you know why there's a uh, a bungee cord on that one? And they're like, no, why? And he's like, why? Wait, you'll find out. And he like put the snake back and put the lid on and left the bungee cord off. And two seconds later, you just see this fucking gigantic constrictor snake head just pop out. And he just like wanders back onto the table. They don't put bungee cord on. He can just lift the lid. Ooh, snakes are great. <laughs> I love snakes. 
<laughs> and, and like on one hand it's kind of cool like if you're talking about like a little garter snake or like a little pet snake but no this shit is like one of the most deadly poisonous snakes in the fucking country and they just pissed it off because they milked it anyway a uh, brain in a bag <laughs> yep i'll just sling it over you my shoulder it. and say now what <laughs> I mean, I think or... it can still brain melt. I it doesn't turns. need to see someone. I don't. It's I... going to use its claws and try and get out of the bag. It can't. It, your cape. it can't uh, see so... though. It doesn't have eyes. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't it need has... to see. It has. It has sight. Maybe it has. It light. has blind um, sight. Yeah. Or... Hmm. So, question: the cape that you're using, uh, is there anything special about it, or? Is it In my notes, it says "big cloak." Rip, rip. So it might be like Quite literally. It might be like uh, it's probably a heavy duty fabric, like you yeah. wear it if it's rainy. It's an adventurer cloak. Where the fuck did you get this thing? <laughs> Who knows? You pick up things. Okay. I, I seriously like to think we went like we did the over under spell and we're just in crazy corruption world. You and definitely. you're just like, oh, a cloak. <laughs> this is definitely a thing that you picked up in like the horror mancer's clock tower. One hundred percent. It's on blue black. Bat- it's some blue style. You just showed up there and stole his favorite hoodie. <laughs> I didn't take his books though. Somebody else took his book. Um, <laughs> wait, no, no, it was um. That seems like something I would do, actually. <laughs> no, I think, I think the actually. No, I think Passion took it. Yeah. We were waiting for him. He wasn't there. It's not our business. I read it. I didn't take it. Anyway, if he yeah. wants it back, he can come get it. Uh, so it is going to use its uh, turn to try and shred this cloak, which I'm going to give a few hit points, but not a lot because it's just. I think I think cloth has like a ten AC or something. Uh, eleven. Hmm. Cloth has an eleven AC. Cloth is easier to hit. I would have expected one. five. Cloth is easier. <laughs> it's harder to hit than a fucking level one wizard. Well, that's only if a level one wizard has zero dex. Or negative. One well, also could be indicating that the cloth is more likely to move out of the way yeah. of your sword. That's than... more about it. I mean, yeah. a boar could not, a boar would have trouble killing a piece of cloth. It would have trouble yeah. killling a, a wizard. I've Toro, seen... Toro, ole. <laughs> I've seen this happen. I've seen what happens to the wizard. The wizard almost dies. I don't know. I remember a story of an old fat fighter dude that ruled the lands and he got killed by a boar. I remember how Her- Nix almost died to a boar. Is that the guy that went after the windmills? Um, I'm not <laughs> sure, but I was kind of referencing Game of Thrones. Like, early seasons. Like, good seasons. You're thinking Don Quixote and also not a real dude. <laughs> well, up to upper debate. No. <laughs> He's real to me. I'm not a historian. He's in so many books. So is yeah, Robin Hood and King a Arthur. Book, the book about him. <laughs> Some say those were based on real people, even if they, their exploits were not exactly the same. So is Saint Nick. <laughs> He's in okay. a lot of books. So because we've described this cloak as big and heavy, it has not been destroyed yet, but it is not doing great. Is, there, is it possible for me to use my defense expert to interpose my shield to add to the AC? Please. Please. <laughs> I'm just imagining you're like, shit, it's getting out and just like Bonk. stick it up against the wall. The blades can't get through it if the shield's field. on the other side. Like turn the shield around and just like just like Tupperware bowl with a giant spider. I'm going to look at Grook and say this isn't going to last forever. We need a uh, different solution. Uh, and I need another saving throw, please, from uh, Cybris, since you were the uh, closest. Actually, no, I need that from Grook, because you have become a problem for this little creature. Hmm. Oh, God. What does this... Thank God not me who just punched and punted this thing Oh, no, into... it wants to get the fuck away from what you. Does, what does this feel like? Uh, it feels like an intelligence check. Hmm. I, with a 26, what does it feel like? No, just what the fuck. I'm proficient. I'm a druid. God damn it. I'm like one of the biggest bangs to intellect of ours. God damn it. God, you Um, think really hard and its head explodes. Scanners. Yeah, so you feel this, this, um... Well, if if it had targeted Onyx, Onyx would be out of the, um, out of the interview definitely now because uh, she would have zero intelligence. (laughs) (laughs) 
uh, it, it feels uh, almost like the um, uh, the hint of like telepathy of like something trying to make communication with you, but you instinctively are like fuck that noise and pull away uh, and it, the feeling fades and this thing just continues to writhe around in the sack angrily. <sighs> Onyx, what would you like to do? Uh, so Cybers, do you have it currently basically contained against the wall with your shield? It is grappled, right? Yeah. I punched the shield. <laughs> <laughs> it magnifies your punch even even bigger bigger size. And actually, it actually like disperses it on a greater force, so it would actually get a bonus to AC because it's basically protected by a shield, right? I'm going to capture one of these eventually. I guess today's not the day. We need like Fair a not. steel mesh bag that reflects brain waves. Also, I mean, Cybris did um, ask for a different kind of solution and Onyx is in their room. Wait, can, can, <laughs> what did you expect? can attacks and such get through Cybris' shield? I think he I means a, a physical shield, yeah, not a the physical, uh, ability. Like a physical normal. I know, type. but I mean, hypothetically, like a defragger's bubble shield, like they couldn't do no. the intellect thing. Nope. No, mm. no. Mm. Q2, like a lab and a big those, generator that makes a defragger because, shield. Like, that's one of those weird things because, like, it says nothing can go through it, even spells, but, like, it's not a spell, but. I rolled a 20 on the first hit. Oh, yeah, you hit, yeah. And that is maximum damage of 11. That's a 25. And number 11. 11 to hit or 11 damage? No, 11, 25 to hit. 11, Tw 11 damage. damage. More damage. Then you went cast mending on my coat. And oh, uh, that's a 28. Just goes up. Um, actually, I don't think I have mending. Oh, I'm sorry. I, actually, and that's I, 10 damage. I do not think I have mending. <laughs> I'll get you the a The bag one. is is very bloodied and limp, but you can still hear it moving and shuffling around inside. It's very clearly fucked up, though. It's my turn. Grok, what do you want to do? Uh, it needs another deck save. That's my bonus action. How is this thing so fucking tanky? Holy shit. Because it, it's gaining resistance each hit. Yeah. It doesn't... Against magic? No, against I guess everything. It, the it more it fights something, the better it, it defends against it. Ah, okay. Um, also, it, you it's, it's getting very lucky. Um, 16. Nope. So, Cypress, you're holding on to it, and the vine also wraps around it. So it's grappled by the vine. If this has um, an end soon, I'm going to have to do with Jason 7. <laughs> <laughs> I had to look up which one it was, but that's correct. It's also Jason X. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, he probably returns it. Yeah, it makes so, sense to the do Jason it. Jason X one is fucking great. We watched that a couple of months Jason ago. Jason X is amazing. It's probably, I fucking die. Unironically, it is probably my favorite Jason movie, but it's only because it's so it's shit fantastic. and it knows I, it's shit. I, I want to point out my plan. Originally, if Cyrus hadn't said, like, I hold it, like, against the wall with my shield, Onyx would have, like, grabbed either the bag and just, like, smashed the bag against the wall. <laughs> Jason, I was expecting, yeah. like, yeah. speed bag. Or... No, or alternatively, alternatively, if it had gotten out of the bag, like while it was falling out of the bag, she would have just punted it again. <laughs> um, so like, it's falling. Punt it and then just do two more kicks as it's flying off. Uh, so it is it is very grappled, uh, Cybris. <laughs> what do you want to do, if anything? It does I, seem like this thing is slowing down significantly. I haven't gone yet. Oh, uh, I thought your thing... No, that was a bonus. That was bonus. Oh, shit, never mind. Okay. I'm just Continue. keeping concentration on it. Do you want to punch it? No, I'd rather not touch it. I would... It'd be a waste of a fifth level spell to cure myself of the disease, which I'm going to have to do to you after this. Um... Meh. I don't know. We'll see. Charisma save. Druids have a lot of spells, don't they? they do. It's almost like we're full casters. Our, I mean, I'm going to make the joke of our group is very heavy control spell oriented, so mm -hmm. you rolled 17? another at 20. 17? Yeah. Okay, so it's double grappled. 
God damn it. And that doesn't give it any disadvantages or penalties to deck saves. No. Not really, but... No, it doesn't, Scotty. <clears throat> Grapple only reduces your, your speed to zero. Yep, that's the only thing grappling does. It reduces your speed to zero. Yep, you have to be not uh, uh, either knocked prone or pinned to um, get a dex reduction. Yeah, it makes zero decks. sense. <clears throat> I already did it, so I can't back out. Back out on it. Um, six pillars of stone burst from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Is there enough space for six pillars of stone? This building is coming down. No, uh, no. You're in a dressing room. Isn't each of these pillars of stone is like five feet in diameter or something like that? Or ten? Five foot diameter, yeah. Okay, so what is your intention with this? Uh, squish it in the ceiling where it's away from me. Valid. Do you also want to squish us into the ceiling? Oh, wait, no, I said charisma save, didn't I? Yeah, you yeah. didn't say charisma. I said Not dex. That is weird. Sorry, There's I was debating bunch. between two spells. You said charisma. charisma. You're making it think it's being crushed. I was attempting to plane shift it, and it didn't work. That's what okay. happened. So, okay. another high-level spell, gone. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just kill it. I literally, I literally just rolled a 17, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay, it's just the two highest-level spells that I only get once per long rest each. It's no big deal. What else we got to do today? Go ahead. Just kill it. What would so, you like to do? It's held up by the vine, right? Mm -hmm. And you. Okay. I'm but gonna you can let go, it. and the vine's I'm going to pull the shield away, and I'm going to do what I was going to do to that golem before, and activate my rocket boots to do, like, a powerful upper knee attack. <laughs> oh, by the way, the vine is supposed to pull it 20 feet towards it, but since Cybers is grappling it, do we want to say, like, both the brain and Cybers move 10 feet towards the vine? Sure, yeah. Uh, you were trying to knee it? Yeah, I'm doing like an uppercut with the knee. Okay, using yeah. Using rocket boots to add to the, the power. Go For ahead. Flashiness. Rocket power. Roll your attack, and I'll say, because it's cool and you're using a bunch of stuff, even though double grapple doesn't do it, I'll let you have advantage. Okay. Uh, 24. Yeah, I yeah, hit. Yeah. This is just a regular melee, so I think that's just what what is that? That's I don't know how to kick things or punch things. What is it? D6 or one D4. Or if you know raw, zero. You don't roll for uh, it. it's just whatever your strength is. Oh my yeah, strength. One. one plus okay. strength. Five damage. You gotta be kidding me, is it still up? How do you, you want know, to do this? Finally. <laughs> On the fucking dot. It literally had five <laughs> hit points left, yo. I want to make this non-lethal. You're lucky I didn't prepare Firestorm today. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm going to hit Sorry. it with the knee and launch it and bounce off the ceiling in its little bag. Yeah, I'll say you, you do that, sort of bounces up, hits the ceiling, and just as it's about to uh, smash down to the ground, the uh, vine is continuing to hold onto the bag and stops it from like just turning chunky sauce on the ground and you have a bag with a unconscious intellect devourer I like that's think... probably bleeding out because like it just took over 80 points of damage i like that's to think tough. this vine kind of curls up like a um <clears throat> you know those like birthday whistle things are like mm -hmm. it's like that <laughs> Um, and that reminds me, uh, Onyx, you did six attacks against her, right? Yes. Okay, I need some rolls. No, you don't. Um, Greater I restoration on both Cybers and Onyx. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that shit. Cat, Cat, I, mean, I was uh, ready to have fun here, but... Fuck that. I was about to say I would actually only do it for three, because uh, the first three attacks were with uh, her bare feet. And the other three were through the shield. She punched the shield mm, and punched the true, cyber yeah. through the shield. So those were actually wouldn't. I mean, you can still roll these for funsies. Yeah, out of curiosity, what would what would this do? I'm interested. Are these uh, for cyber infections? Oh, is that like a different table for weird things? Is that a disease? Uh, not quite. Oh, that just that takes over your brain or something. Yeah. So what would I need to roll? Um. So. I think con. 
It's a con, con save, yes. Yeah. I remember being a giant griffin Cthulhu thing, and I had to make a bunch of con so saves. So I would need to make three con saves? Yep. And cool. Cerberus would have to do one, because I think 29. You... <laughs> Defragger in a nutshell. Yeah. That was a natural 20 all the time. I can't go higher than 29. I hope I don't need to. Um, I hope so, too. Why do I not have three. its DC listed in here? That's stupid. Ba, ba, ba. I would base it off of its con. 24, dirty yeah, 20. Oh, wait, this is a this is a d12. Uh, <laughs> a D here, I add a D. 17. What? Weird, I can't roll higher than a 12. 17 was the last one. I mean... Also, out of curiosity, I looked at the sidelines and... Wow, that magic adaption is bullshit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Sidelines like, are OP as shit. There's a reason that they almost won the machine war. I mean, Onyx can do like... Can damage each sidelight once and that's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but you can't do anything anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I. what was the lowest you got in your con save? 17. Okay. No, you you don't feel any effects from it, but Gruck and Cybers, you know from doing research on these things, you wouldn't really feel it before it's too late. But Gruck, you are like, yeah, no, no, I don't want any part of that. And immediately cure them of those diseases of uh, any chance of it. Mm hmm uh, and you, you have a... I just spent four high-level spell slots for a brain. Let's get out of Holy here. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, if, if Onyx was caught alone with that thing, she would lose. She couldn't kill it. The vine's still grasping it, by the way. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, for what it's worth, I do... Um, I'll say... Uh, Cyrus has done a lot of research on these things. He does know that there is one thing that can help um, get rid of those like resistances that it has, um, and that is acid damage. Whenever a Cyblight takes acid damage, uh, not only are they um, what's the word? Oh wait, vulnerable so they... to it. They also whenever they take acid damage, they lose any of the resistances to other things that they've accumulated up to that point. Yes, we actually we actually knew that as a, a group already. Too. We should, so we should definitely wait. remember that, because I have a lot okay, of acid Okay, options. okay, okay. Okay, yes. so, so does, it, does it mechanically need to properly take acid damage? What do you what mean? What is acid, isn't it? Okay, so... <laughs> no, 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 the following thing. That Onyx is a corruption blood. layer. Onyx has acid blood. When you punch something, you bruise your knuckles. But it doesn't go out of your knuckles. You don't spray blood out of yeah, your knuckles. Yeah, so I would say, like, can Onyx you purposely, would have actually... like, do one damage to their hand and then. I would say you Luffy would have did that to actually against Crocodile. Be bleeding if you happen yeah. to be bleeding for whatever reason from taking damage or from doing it to yourself, you could okay. use your blood as acid to do that. But just punching them bare fisted wouldn't really do it because it's if not going to actually break the skin usually it, it's not gonna break the skin enough to actually do enough I'm, it's not like they're, they're not gonna be defeated horribly by you know picking up a corroded battery okay. it's effectively what that would be here's a good question, I mean, question for you so there's a retroverse spell first level evocation spell called bloodshot it says the blood comes from the it. caster oh so onyx had that spell that would be interesting. Maybe a tattoo. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, also, if you do punch with bare knuckles, it does actually break the skin. Depending on how hard you punch and what you're punching. Yeah, like. Doesn't Onyx have, like. No, if you're punching a fleshy. I mean, Onyx, Onyx, skin. Prob Onyx probably is. Yeah, she has pretty strong skin. Also, if you're punching a fleshy brain. <laughs> And metal reinforced skin by this point too. Well, the brain has like wires from... and stone and stuff. Uh, the, have... the brain did actually have armor. It had steel grafts that made its AC higher than normal to a hmm. fourteen. Oh no! Up from the normal like twelve. I want to point out that the only way I miss this is if I roll a three or lower. 
Everything it's almost like we're high level D and D characters. Yeah. So you have a bag with a brain in it, and there is a very quiet knock on the door. Um. Uh, Miss Onyx. Yes. Uh, is everything okay in there? We were hearing a lot of loud noises. Well, there's like four bodies in here and a brain. <laughs> 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 okay, Onyx, maybe, maybe we should do the time. They're talking. They're talking like about silence for a second. They're talking about. They're t oh, Onyx is talking about. Security. Don't, yeah, get security. Don't, don't worry. Onyx is talking about props. They're really lifelike. Don't yeah, worry. They didn't kill anyone. It's not a human brain. It's a. It's a cyborg brain. Onyx. <laughs> <laughs> They're props for the kids' cartoon. Onyx, they needed Onyx, bodies. Stop helping. <laughs> Onyx, you need to shut the fuck up. Is what Krug is saying. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, we can clean up that mess. Onyx, you need to go and get on stage, right? I do want to point out that Onyx is currently just basically trying to uh, sabotage this whole thing because I can tell. <laughs> We're gonna have Wait, to come do this what? again. Like, like Grux, like very weird because Grux smiling and he never does that. But <laughs> Onyx, you've known all of you have known Grux long enough that you stare into his void eyes and you can just see him being like, "Oh my god, get the f out of here before you cause more <laughs> trouble." Before I banish Walking you. International <laughs> incident, Onyx. On that's just her nickname at this point. The international hold on, incident. Hold on. Hold that's on, a hold great. On. That's a great. I title. want to. I want to point out that Onyx behaved during the uh, peace talks. Right. That's mm -hmm. true. She absolutely she behaved. Cookie? Yes. She did. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, a few this... moments later, the door opens and you see uh, a security guard sort of standing there with like his hand on his on his gun, looking in. Uh, and behind him, you see uh, Susan, uh, and uh, she's a bit a bit back. And then from around her, you see the intern Haley just sort of poking her head around. Everything okay in there? Cyrus is gonna give a wave to Susan. I just it's... imagine like this bloody bear just like <laughs> dripping blood. The cloak. This is dripping like disgusting yellow blood. We got one. Oh, one what? Oh, oh, that thing. Mm. Oh. I hate okay, these so no things. one can use any of the costumes in this room for um, maybe ever. You should. Uh, and the intern is just like. Shit. Start scratching oh. stuff out on her. Cancel clipboard. Romeo and Actually, Julia. I'm I'm going to I'm going to check the um the bodies, the three that are in the in the thing. Mm -hmm. Are they still alive? Uh no. As soon as you go okay. to move them, you can you can very clearly feel like as you move them that the, the head head empty, no thoughts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the brain has been eaten. Okay. Uh, and it, it's not that difficult to figure out that these are effectively uh, spare suits. Yeah, I, I was thinking because maybe like they were still alive and being kept there, just like basically stunned and with zero intelligence because that's just basically being stored. No, these are... <laughs> so they don't decompose. <laughs> yeah, the, these are, are definitely, um, definitely dead. It is strange, though, because at least from like the passing idea of what you guys have of intellect of hours typically once the brain leaves body's dead starts to compose decompose because there's no brain to keep body functions going so there's something weird about these things how they're different than regular intellect of hours of which... biology <laughs> such a shame that you need a brain god I mean, it has not stopped. Weak, what an people. evolutionary disadvantage. I mean, the flesh is weakness. weak. The flesh right. is weak. <laughs> um, yeah, Cyber has suddenly joined the Adeptus Mechanicus. Okay. What, wait, Upl upload a backup. Now? I, I gotta work towards it. That Cyber has been actively trying to join I mean, yeah, them okay. the entire no, time. No joke flavor-wise, there's... At least two races in Test Wave Three that could be Adeptus Mechanicus themed. Actually, three, because um, the gnome one, the Mecha gnome. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, shall we? 
I'm uh, it's not dead. Wait, it's not? I think, I think it's not dead. Susan's like, do you want to make it dead? The Grug, the Onyx Grug. just squashes the back. Like, well, I thought both, maybe like, we wanted like a, a, a No, no, right. don't touch. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm holding I will up above say her it head. is. She can't reach it. <laughs> I Are you turning to a side light? Up, I'm not curious. I think it's it's up on the uh, uh, vine thing. Yeah, the so vine just dragged it to the corner. To... Uh, so if like Grok would like prisoner. to stop you, he can try to do that. Can I just use primal savagery to make like my fingers claws of acid and just acid the shit out of it until it's disintegrated? That's Please. what we did last time with them too. I remember that. Did you, you want to capture this, Grok? I thought you wanted to capture one of these. Yeah, when it was alive. It is alive. Now we can put it in a cage and like. Susan speaks up. It is unconscious, from what I can tell. These things can go into your brain. Let's not capture it. Let's just fucking nuke it. I'm not gonna learn anything that way, but it's not my decision. I poke it once with primal savagery to reset its resistances. And said, "I'll take care of it." <laughs> okay. <clears throat> By the way, this and, might this might really hurt it because I'm stupid high level and it's a cantrip. Oh, it's it, yeah. Yeah, it's three D it's three like, D ten acid. Oh my god. Yeah, it's dead. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go to a different dressing room and look for a big cloak to replace the one that <laughs> Onyx, I lost. Onyx looks on. There might be more. Yeah. Um, Cyprus, you should be on the lookout with that thing looking for more, as he points to the device that you have. And oh, Onyx yeah. also, like, with a little bit of glibness in her voice, says to Susan, I think you have a security leak. Yeah, it seems that way. No, it's very lucky that you guys were here. I appreciate the assist. I'm going to have to borrow that at some point to see if we can make something similar. I hate no. to imagine that we have more of these things around our city, but... Well, they're probably I'm, everywhere. I'm quickly learning that a lot of the things that we previously assumed are not necessarily true any longer. We have so, been working on trying to replicate this device. Onyx, are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, follow me. And she just turns and walks away. And the interns just sort of like looking between you guys, waiting to see what you do. Us? Well, between Susan and Onyx. Oh, okay. Onyx tracks and follows. Uh, so, Grok, you very quickly make work of reducing this cloak and brain to a goopy, disgusting puddle of mush. Oh shit! Wait, one one more thing that I actually wanted to ask that I forgot to ask because uh, got distracted. Uh, the bodies, the other bodies that were in there, were they like dressed for certain other jobs? Um, the one on top was dressed uh, like uh, <clears throat> something like a waitress. Um, the one sort of pram below her was wearing some kind of suit. It was probably some kind of businessman. Uh, and the last one looked almost like a uh, mercenary, like uh, wearing... Um, like light leather armor. Mm -hmm. uh, all human or like, um, uh, I'll say the mercenary is a half elf. Uh, Cyprus is going to go to a different dressing room to like maybe find like tall John Bell John type uh, act. Okay. Uh, you, take, you can take one of those enough to do that. The big collar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Style, style is often. important. I was I somehow in my mind had a uh, had like a like a uh, pimp coat. For, like the fur I could see like a fur pimp coat Cyrus with like tiger stripes down. on it. He doesn't wear that to work. <laughs> I, no, Hera, Hera, it's just the Vin Diesel cloak coat from Triple X. Oh yes. I don't know. Would an anthro person wear animal fur coat? If it's not a real animal animal fur. Hmm. Maybe a human skin coat. <laughs> okay, Lady oh, Gaga. Oh, so human skin. Okay, Lady Gaga. That was a very long delay on that. <laughs> you know, you gotta wait till you get a reaction and then uh, change what you said. Clip. 
Yeah. Cypress isn't a uh, um, serial killer. <laughs> it's fine. He'd be the first to say that. <clears throat> I would uh, without, without even asking. So, uh, she leads you over to uh, what's clearly like the sound set stage. Uh, looks like it's set in front of a uh, like a very childish rendition of a pirate ship. Um, uh, and she says, so, I was told that you were going to write something for today. Yeah. May I hear and it? <clears throat> she pulls, uh, she pulls something out and it is, uh, um, like a, a piece of paper just that she has, uh, handwritten on, like, uh, her own, uh, kind of speech. Mm -hmm. And like it's not uh, necessarily like it's it's not anything like super rebellious revolutionary, but it is like just a, a general uh, message about um, nonviolence, but also the importance of standing up to bullies. And um, basically, she just says, "It's it's just." Honestly, it's just better this way because whatever your writers are going to come up with, it's not going to sound like me. That's accurate. I can't imagine any of the uh, individuals here would quite have your um, your tone. It's just going to sound unauthentic, right? Yeah. Um... I think this will work. Uh, I look forward to seeing it. Uh, and she hands the uh, thing that you wrote off to Haley and goes off to uh, sit up at the, um, uh, the like, not director chair, but sort of the, the big fancy chairs at the back of the room. And as soon as she sits down, her face like goes completely blank. Uh, almost like she cast a spell and isn't really paying attention to the surroundings in here. Mm -hmm. um, Haley comes up. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I would like to get you some shoes, if you don't mind. We have a whole bunch. Um, and maybe a shirt that doesn't have a hole in it. Um, Onyx looks to the um, to like the whole pirate uh, setup and, se and and just says, "I think I fit right in here." Okay, that's fair. We could work with that. The pirate set was kind of going to be like a one-off thing, but we could we could work with that. Also, I do want to point out, you just got infiltrated by a cyblight brain thingy. A what? Cyblite. Yeah. That's I don't know what that thing did. Yeah, that was what was in the bag. Okay, <clears throat> well, for what it's worth, Susan quarantined the whole area, so we're not getting anything from there. So any costume you're going to get is from the other department, so it's not going to be I mean, like, yeah, but what um, what areas did this, did this uh, thing have access to? Well, like, I don't know that it really maintains on clothing like that but I suppose if you're really concerned then we could um, I could get a cleaning crew in real quick and, and do like a spray down there's like a spray that they can do to try and disinfect everything really quickly um, yes that's 100% what's happening Vex <laughs> I come back and Onyx is just trying to drag this out as much as she possibly can yes <laughs> <clears throat> Um, she's like, I, I don't, I don't think that I, I honestly, I have not done a lot of research on Cyblates. They weren't, um, really a thing here in Don Diablo during the Shroom Wars, and I didn't really do a lot of studying there, but it was my understanding that it was only if they touched something, and if it was in his brain, well, the brain wouldn't have any reason to touch things, Right? I only know that they don't like acid. That's good to know. That's really helpful. I mean, if worse comes to worse, you just cut myself and then 
should get rid of Wait, can she even get infected? If her entire blood is like filled with acid, basically, and it's, it's probably not acid. bloodborne hair, it's probably cellborne. I mean, the why, why blood can't is it, everywhere in your fucking body. Why can't it be bloodborne? You got something against bloodborne? Cellborne is more uh, than bloodborne. The funny thing is, is it's a nanovirus. It's little Nano tiny minuscule machines. Yeah. And if they're weak to acid, they cannot actually infect onyx. I mean, even even like when they even even like if it's cellborn, like they have to somehow like they will eventually come in contact with blood, right? You, and the bloodstream is the most effective way to spread a virus throughout the body. Um, also, what you're saying is, Harry, Onyx doesn't need to worry about the cleaning crew then. <laughs> I just re- I just re- I just realized that because I keep forgetting about that. This is that I have Hera, this not Onyx. Onyx yeah, is, is trying Hera. to drag this out as mm-hmm, much as exactly. possible. <laughs> This Hair is, this is, is me just spitballing how to be a badass. Um, Always. Like, <laughs> so, I will say, oh, we can go with the pirate theme. We can, I can get you some things that are from outside of the department if you're worried about anything that got that, that individual touched. Um, I actually, if you're interested, you seem like you know quite a bit about um, the Psyblades and your friends seemed very competent considering they were here one second and gone the next and the next moment you have a, a dead side light in a bag apparently you if these do things know are that we did kill the anarchist or defeated him i guess i am aware yes but these are also a thing that haven't been seen in millennia the anarchist was just a person um it might be interest. It might be helpful to maybe make some kind of announcements about the best ways to deal with these things. Obviously, depending on how tonight's show goes, I don't want to push you into anything if you're not really interested in more than a one-time uh, sort of thing. But a thing to think about. Honest, just squint eyes. You want me to go on this children's show and tell them about sidelines? No, 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 not on the children's show. No, 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 no. We'll do the children's show tonight, and then for another program, an informational thing, maybe for probably for the adults, because this is not a thing that we want to scare the kids with. But it's also maybe something that they should be aware of to be like. Okay. Okay. Just clarifying. Yeah. I, I am not really a public media person. I'm aware, but you have a bit of a personality that people like. And maybe I could ask Passion. She's more into that kind of thing. Perhaps. And she's also very popular, you know? Um, so I think we're good to go. <clears throat> uh, and she uh, manages to get you a passable costume it's not great it's basically what they could find out of like other people's closets considering they didn't want to put you in stuff that might have been contaminated um they do break out the uh big bubble helmet which is styled to look like a like a diving helmet uh so it's got like the plastic around it i have a question how tight does the costume fit uh the the costume for like the um the like pirate outfit is just regular clothes that are kind of like piratey themed that are kind of raggedy uh the bubble helmet thing it's not going anywhere but it's not like suffocating it's it's like comically large kind of like a like a rye bobblehead okay i I was i was more like the for the normal clothes so it wouldn't and they wouldn't just tear apart because she like flexes or something. Oh no, <laughs> no, they're very loose. It, it, they basically just get you um, like a couple of like the cool red pirate sash that they wear and like a, t- a torn striped shirt, that sort of thing. Um, they lean very hard into the pirate uh, motif. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and the, the kids come out, they're a group of them, mostly uh, humans, uh, looks like two tieflings uh, and a uh, aqua rye, uh, who um, basically have their lines, they're 
they're child actors. They're not the most impressive. Oh, be before before this whole thing starts, Onyx also goes over like to the to the stage thing and inspects it, mm -hmm. um, like how solidly it's built and how careful she needs to be. Um, like <laughs> if you were doing a proper fight, you could definitely smash the fuck out of the stage. But like just regularly walking and probably even like a little bit of jumping around, it's not gonna be a problem. Alright. Like, it, it's not one that was built yesterday. It's definitely, like, this has been in use for a while. It's, it's pretty it's, dirty. It's not built out of, like, the cheapest of what it's no. like. Okay. No, you can tell that this place has been in use for several years. Uh, and, like, all the kids know each other, and they know the intern. They're uh, excited to be here. Um, the one Aqua Rai sits down next to you, and she's like, I saw your art. It's really cool. Thanks. My mom, um, my mom's not a fan, but I think that's just because I, um, I tried to, to replicate it in my room and I didn't do a great job. And I also caught the curtains and the cat with the spray paint. So, but yours is very nice. Hey, keep at it. And then she winks and say, don't get caught. <laughs> Uh, so they, uh, basically the, uh, whole episode is talking about, um, this, uh, story of, like, a gang of pirates that, um, uh, the whole point of it is knowing that they're friends together, that, uh, sometimes they end up having to, uh, get in disagreements with, uh, other people on other ships but that when they're together they don't fight they don't uh steal from each other <laughs> it's not true pirates never steal they just don't steal from each other um uh and they they do work in the bullying thing um the, the anti-bullying thing talking about how it's uh, uh not great to do that um uh, Onyx, I imagine, has a lot of moments where she has to catch herself not cursing. It's like, oh, yeah. fudge. <laughs> yeah, there's there's quite a few like cutscenes where they have to uh, call it for a second and let the kids run off and get donuts and juice and whatnot, and then come back. And it's it's very much like herding cats. Um, uh, going around the rest of the event, uh, Cyberace, you don't see any more pings off of that device it just seemed like the one um however as you are uh i'll say you guys probably did take the time to like search the body's pockets uh you do find a like <clears throat> the cell phone um a regular cell phone and then another one that is simultaneously looks like very old but also incredibly high tech it's like the the chassis has a very old outdated model but when you actually like pick it up and start to turn it on, you can see that it's much more advanced than this model ever would have been. Um, and looking through, you see photos of almost every person working in this set. Photos of Susan, of the vehicle that she arrived in and her uh, guards that are, are uh, arrived with her of all kinds of things. It looks like this guy has been documenting for at least several days. Uh, that's not good. Who do we tell? Good question. <laughs> we'll revisit that. <laughs> Who do I tell about this? Looks around. Onyx uh, over on stage. Grump. Demona. I'll, I'll, I'll tell Demona. And Seth. <laughs> <laughs> He's got keyboard skills. Yeah, he's not he's not the first he's pretty good at it um uh and you guys uh close the episode out it, it's it's awkward it's definitely not the most um brilliant thing you've ever done but it, it's not as painful as maybe you were expecting onyx the kids are kind of sweet and goofy uh and the second that the cameras are off they immediately wait start. wait 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 i have i have uh i actually have um a Proficiency in performance. 
You do? Oh, yes. You're telling us that now? The kids it's, are still child actors, but you might be more so impressive. Oh, yeah, that's a 19. Yeah. Uh, so the, the kids are actually kind of just enamored with you. They think you're the coolest thing ever. Uh, as soon as the cameras stop rolling, they immediately start trying to ask for piggyback rides and uh, to sit on your shoulders. And I'm just imagining at one point you're doing the like the um, lifting a kid up on your muscle uh, on your arm, sort of so thing. She she t poses and has like all of the kids hang off of both arms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Uh, meanwhile. Uh, well, this is going down. Uh, is there anything special that Passion is doing? And I think Gruck uh, kind of went MIA for a bit. Or are you doing um, something, Scott? I'm cleaning up our mess. Mm. I was trying to find if I had any spells that can help, but I don't. So I just get a mop and bucket. <laughs> you don't have, have Fresh Digitation? No, what do you think I am, no, a wizard? I, I have Fresh Digitation, and I'm not you a wizard. You could get octopus arms and use a bunch of mops. You're a cheater wizard. I I no I'm a warlock. Yeah, with a fucking tome of shadows. That, that's actually what gave me the the pet prestidigitation. Being a warlock gave me prestidigitation. Unfortunately, oh. prestidigitation isn't a magic from nature. Ah. Yeah. Wait, I actually do have prestidigitation. <laughs> <laughs> you. That Maybe you can use that machine and I'll clean it up because I I have the tattoo. Okay, but don't touch it. No, I'll just point at it and sparkles fly out and clean it up. <laughs> That's how it works. Ah, I see he learned I mean, from the school of... Uh, the, 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 this, I see he learned from Passion's way of doing magic. Just point and sparkles come out. Showmanship is important. I've said that time and again. It looks like he was going to argue that like the sparkles is like just one effect, and if you do that, it doesn't clean. But Grux just like, okay, and he just leaves. I'm just imagining this conversation being repeated. Like she just points and sparkles come out while like standing in front of a microwave pointing at it and inside is a ramen cup with a fork still in it. Uh. <laughs> that is very passion. No, you, you failed on step one though. Passion doesn't cook stuff. Yeah. She eats it raw yeah. and it bugs everyone and it makes it's me so savage. happy. It's delicious. Th that I just imagine passion just with a I say this of as pizza. someone that also genuinely loves the taste, the just like, like the cracker. crunch of of dry ramen, but also like you're a crazy woman. <laughs> the Egg whole noodles thing, are a tasty no. Street. Yes, just a, just a fresh freezer pizza. <laughs> I always get like when a forbidden I was ramen as a kid, I would always like cookies. break off a little corner of it and then cook the rest of it and sprinkle the stuff on top, so it was like a little crunchy bit on on the top, like a topping. Oh, no. I will literally just go to town on a whole ramen packet as a snack, like chips. Anyway. <laughs> uh, is there anything specific Passion is doing uh, during this bit? Uh, probably just doing what you, I told you last time. Okay. And um, that's about it. Okay. Uh, so the TV show uh, wraps up all of the kids do the like happy freeze frame thing at the end where they all jump and the camera stops. Um, uh, the kids all the run floor. off. Uh, kids all run off to various different um, guardians and uh, to get snacks and lunch and everything. Um, and Susan approaches uh, the... Onyx, Onyx takes off the bubble helmet, kicks it away. <laughs> One of the other, uh, like one of the prop um, heads, just runs over and picks it up, like starts inspecting it for tears. I was like, I didn't kick it that hard. Come on, Onyx, you just fucking Mulan trampled the fuck out of a brain earlier. Um, yeah, you did like twenty five dam. You did thirty five damage with three kicks. Mm -hmm. You could absolutely ruin a bubble helmet. Yeah, um, yeah but you see Susan approaching. Um, uh, she says, I I feel like you're going to want to have uh, your group together. I feel like there's, there's something happening. Um, 
and she pulls out a um, tablet and hands it over to to Onyx. And are Cyberus or Gruck uh, anywhere in the vicinity? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, you guys can all sort of gather up and see. Uh, it looks like a uh, a distant section of Del Diablo. You can tell it's still Del Diablo because you can see like the iconic sky color in the corner of the rift in the sky. And what looks like a very angry and ominous looking storm cloud approaching very quickly. Um, and the, the lightning that's coming off of it is a like neon green. It, it definitely doesn't look natural. Um, she says, I, I'm not. Onyx looks to Susan and it's just like, so if Cyblats attack Del Diablo, does that sound a, a count as breaking the treaty? It should not, because Cyblades aren't a <clears throat> country, as 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 understood by our definitions. But I'm learning that we have there are people surrounding the borders, and I worry that things are moving very quickly. Uh, and as you guys are watching, you see these dark shapes in that cloud sort of moving about. It's hard to tell exactly what they are, but they're definitely very, very large. Uh, and I think we'll pick up there next time. Because some folks have a thing to do. Uh, we did start a little late, but um, it's cool to leave it off on a bit of a cliffhanger when hopefully we have uh, everybody here. Yeah, no, this is fine. Uh, so, plugs. Um, Vex, do you want to go first? Sure. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at VexyHexy. You can also find me on my channel, Fractured Moon D&D, &D, where uh, the next game is going to be next Sunday, hopefully. I should say this. Hopefully it'll be next Sunday at 3.30 p.m. EST, which, which Harold will talk more about. Following that... 3.30? Uh, or 12.30. My brain was going to my next game, which is at 3.30. And is my game, Union Academy, which I said both of those games hopefully should be happening. I don't know my timeline yet, because I have Thanksgiving on that weekend. No, Americans, don't worry. It's just me, not you guys. Um, aside from that, um, every the, so in two weeks from now, pretty much, um, on Tuesday and Thursday, I have also Unwritten as well as uh, Saffron Academy. Both on, first one on Tuesday, second one on Thursday, both at, I think, 8 o'clock as well. So come check those games out. It's a blast. And that's it. Uh, Hera, do you want to go next? Yes. Uh, as Vex mentioned, next Sunday on Frag Check Moon D&D &D here on Twitch at 12.30 p.m. EST. Um, will be a mass game. Actually, not not this Sunday, like the next Sunday. Yeah, next coming um, Sunday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> next weekend, not this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, uh, uh, it'll be fun. Um, it's great chaos. We also left up uh, on the cliffhanger. Um, someone got captured by aliens that may or may not their par be their parents. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. That's a lot. Yeah. After they they are an alien the entire, too. They also spent the entire uh, session chilling as a gecko. Yeah, they were running away from their responsibilities, and their responsibilities caught up to them. Because when no you're gecko, you gecko, you don't like. run really fast. Also, especially when you're grabbed by your friends. Especially when your friends <laughs> grab you, thinking you're like an escaped pet type gecko, and want to figure out how to bring you back to your owner. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Luke, do you got anything? Nope. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, so my stuff this coming Monday, the third, fourth, fourth, um, um, the next episode of Baltimore by Night should be going live. This is the first episode that we're doing after the time skip. It's a little awkward because we were uh, getting back into the groove of things. There was a lot of party going on and some people talked to ghosts again, which honestly went over way better than I was expecting. I expected that to go way more <laughs> for some reason. Um, sort of talk. You guys were laughing, so it was weird. 
Yeah, it was a lot of laughing. <laughs> uh, so go check that out on mine and Kev's channel, Crow and Chimera, on YouTube. Um, I also write some things on the DMs Guild and maybe soon on the uh, Storytellers Vault for V5 because they just released that they are now allowing people to write things for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. So I'm very interested in maybe working on that. Uh, so keep an eye on my Twitter uh, for anything like that. Uh, Scott, do you want to close this out? Yeah. Um, so... Unfortunately, tomorrow, due to a few people not being able to make it, we're not having Chaos Crew tomorrow. However, we will be at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this channel, be returning with our Ghost Assault Marsh game. Uh, the group has been dealing with a certain dweller in Salt Marsh that they kind of don't want to be there. Oh, the vampire. I wasn't going to spoil it, but that's Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, and they, um, are probably going to go try to kick his undead hiney, uh, tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. We were like, do we, do we help him or do we just kick his ass? Leaning toward kick his ass. He was offering some very valuable information. They probably couldn't get anywhere else. Something that could shift kingdoms around, but they would Stop rather. Stop trying to tempt me, Scott. But they would rather deal with the undead, which makes sense. There's a paladin and a cleric in the party. But um, that'll be tomorrow. Yeah, so go check that out. Uh, and that has us, Jesse, and also Sage, who was not able to make it tonight. He wasn't feeling great. Um, but Blake, hopefully he'll be up for tomorrow. He plays a Sahuk. And Blake and Jeanette. They're awesome. Uh, and I guess we will see you guys in two weeks to follow up on whatever nonsense is going on outside of Del Diablo. The green screen got <laughs> caught in the big cat. <laughs> probably global. It's probably just Aurora Borealis. Yep. Yeah, no, I don't Good night, know. everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye, um, all.